Hello and welcome to the week ahead where we take a look at what will be moving and shaking the financial markets this time in the week beginning Monday the 20th of March. Now I'm Robina harris Doughty, and joining me as always is our senior market analyst Jasper Lawler. Jasper thank you. Now to kick off this week's edition I want to talk about gold. So we've the markets have been digesting the recent uh, Fed rate hike. We've seen a, a bit of a slump in the US dollar but we've seen a bit of a rally in gold. So we have a bunch of US Fed speeches coming up next week, one of which is from Janet Yellen herself on, on Thursday. Gold at the moment is around the 1200 uh, mark. What's in store for the precious metal? Um, well, I think you, yeah, it's important to, to raise those speeches next week because I think they could be big drivers of gold because what we had in the last week was the Federal Reserve meeting. They lifted rates, as we all suspected. Markets had it pretty much priced at 100% leading into the meeting. Uh, they hiked rates, but the forecasts, uh, as we mentioned, was a risk in our the video that we did on gold in our market snapshot, was the forecasts weren't going to match the expectations seen in the market. The forecasts were dovish, so they did what you call a dovish hike. And so the result was the dollar sold off, and as you said, gold rallied. Um, the, what could happen with these Fed speeches next week is that maybe the Fed decide that actually the market's not quite interpreting what they're trying to do here correctly in that the Fed's trying to put across the signal that we're in a tightening hot cycle, you know, we're raising interest rates, albeit very gradually, but the markets are rallying as if they almost cut rates. Mm. So they may try to defend, maybe even go, try, and, try and readjust market sentiment. Readjusting market sentiment when stocks went higher and gold went higher and the dollar dropped would mean reversing those market moves. So that's, that's a risk for next week. A lot of people talking about that. Um, I tend to think that the Fed is just quite dovish in general. They, they're, they're in no rush to raise interest rates. They'd rather be too late uh, and deal with higher inflation later than, than jump the gun and risk a recession. So that's why I think actually probably gold's looking quite good now because we've got the European elections coming up, still uncertainty there. Um, if the markets sell off, people tend towards gold. But if, if markets are still rallying, it's because of, uh, cause the central bank policy is, is still accommodative and, and that's good for gold too. So. So what, what kind of levels are we looking at? Well, obviously the round numbers are always big. Um, the level that we got to of the highs of the year was around 1260. So I think if we can hold 1200 into next week, then 1260 is back on the cards. And then beyond there, that's when we start looking at really like a, a not a bull market, but a, an uptrend in gold. At the mm. moment, it's still kind of a consolidation. Okay. But I want to touch on another commodity, oil, another yep. trader's mm -hmm. favorite. OPEC members, as we know, they agreed to, uh, to, to cut production back at their November meeting. Now, there's talk again about extending their oil supply uh, cuts because, as we know, it's, it's not enough. Mm. It's not enough. There's still a lot of pressure on, on the price of oil. What do you make of all this? I mean, are markets losing faith in the fact of whether they're actually going to do what they can to, to help push up the price of oil? No, I think you hit the nail on the head. That's why they're talking about extra cuts because at the moment, well, you can see it right there in the oil price. The um, oil price have dropped. It lost 10% in a week um, because, well, there's two factors. A, these cuts by themselves don't really make up for the higher production in the US. So you're looking for this supply glut in the market to be unwound um, so that you know, the supply demand balance is more favorable to higher prices. Uh, but this higher production in the US is offsetting it. Not to mention the second factor being that they're not actually cutting production as much, or at least as quick as they'd promised. So really it's Saudi Arabia doing all the heavy lifting right now. The other OPEC nations being a bit slow to get their, their productions down to these quotas they'd agreed. So mm. if the compliance is not there, US keep producing a lot of oil, that, that's negative for oil. Well, you know, our, our outlook here is that still I don't think we drop into a new sudden downtrend in oil, but I think it's going to be a cycle where Price moves higher, that encourages more US production, uh, there's more supply in the market, the market drops, and it just keeps rotating around. And I think the result of that would be a, a sort of range between 40 and 60 for, for a prolonged period. We've got another OPEC meeting coming up in May, haven't we? That would be the next one. Um, is it, yeah, it's May. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, I'll take your word for that. I was thinking, it's, sometimes it's June, so this time it's obviously May. The last one was November. Um, so that will be when they have the chance to obviously cut policy again, uh, to cut uh, their output. Mm -hmm. I suspect they probably won't. They're probably going to hold and try and at least comply with what they've agreed so far. Okay. I want to move on to some of the data releases we've got coming out next week. UK inflation uh, is coming out Tuesday morning. We've also got retail sales out the UK as well later on in the week. 
The question is about UK inflation is how to tackle the rising inflation and the problem is that now the Bank of England are becoming a little bit divided on how to actually tackle that issue. What's your thoughts on this? Well, <clears throat> the pound um, rallied quite strongly off the lows this week, obviously not unrelated to the fact the dollar was dropping, but it also rallied against the euro, so there's some pound strength in there. Um, the fact that a Scottish referendum off the table, yep. uh, that helped the pound, but I think probably the biggest driver was the fact that we had a dissent from Kristen Forbes who wanted to hike interest rates at the latest Bank of England meeting. And not only that, the, the minutes suggest that some other members in the Bank of England were leaning that yeah, direction exactly. as well. They want to get in there and tackle inflation, which at the moment is above target. And we've said about it before that at the moment, the drop in the pound hasn't even feeded into consumer prices yet. So if that starts to happen, which most people expect it has to, then we're looking at much higher inflation than than their target of two percent, and you know the feeling is maybe they should start getting on getting ahead of the curve now. Mm. Is Sterling going to be an interesting one to watch next week? I think so, absolutely, because <laughs> it's going to be that you know it's really your your market outlook for the for Sterling is either related to interest rates, which really it always comes down to that in currencies. You know, is that difference between the pound uh, between the Bank of England and the and the ECB and the and the Fed going to the difference between their policies, are they going to get closer or, or further Indeed, apart? Yeah. yeah, exactly, that divergence trade. Or are you thinking more politically and you're thinking that Brexit's going to cause problems to the UK economy, that's negative for the pound. There's a, that's a, the kind of the battle line uh, in the market at the moment. And the fact that that 121 level held in, in sterling uh, tells you that actually the the kind of market divergence, interest rate divergence idea is, is actually the one that's, that's winning at the moment. Jasper, thank you as always for joining me. Well, that's it for this edition of The Week Ahead. Make sure you connect with us on social media, so our Facebook, our Twitter, and of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. In the meantime, have a great trading week and speak to you next week. Goodbye for now.